Hey everyone, your designers are here. I'm Anita with Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. And we have tips and tricks and decorating advice for you. So let's get started. Today is episode 80, and we're talking about how to spot and fix an off-balance room. Now, there are definitely (laughs) things to know about how to assess your room for balance, and we'll go through all of that. And as you learn more, it's going to just be something that's intuitive Uh, as you look at your own rooms and rooms and magazines and whatnot, you're going to be able to pick this out. Well, and, and you'll do it quickly. Well, and yes. I think a lot of people mm-hmm. already do this. So, you know, if you're, so not everybody, you know, some people do this intuitively already. So, and you may be one of those. So, so but you, you won't just, know until you listen to the entire that's podcast. Right, you have from to listen to the whole There you are. Figure it out. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. There you Who go. wants to kick it off? Well, um, I'll, I'll, Yvonne does. <laughs> yeah, I'll do. Yes, I'll do. Go, I'll go, do. Go. Um, I just want to start out with the three key elements of balancing a room. And to be honest with you, I knew two of them, but I and I knew the third one, but I wouldn't have put it in the same group. Um, one is a focal point. And that's where your your room should have a focal point. And that's when you walk into a room, that's where your eye's going to usually land first. And it usually and it should be sort of directly across where you enter a room. There should be a focal point there. And I know this because our when I walk through the mudroom of our the back part of our house, I can see from through the mudroom, the kitchen, the breakfast room, and the family room. And the first thing I see is my fireplace at the very end. So I think that is that works. The second thing that to have a balanced room is the center point of a room. And that's like the core of your room's layout. So if you go like let's say into your living room, usually, usually. Like, look where your coffee table is, because it's usually, um, you know, centered, centered to the sofa and the sofa centered to the wall and the, and to the, maybe some end tables. So you need a focal point, a center point and something called triangulation. And it's very mathematical, to be honest with you, uh, we group things in threes a lot as designers because it's very pleasing to our eye. And it really is a mathematical um, equation to be, you know, that's just how it goes. Uh, and it, that's very harmonious to us. And it um, sort of connects things. So when you think of triangulation, you're going to think of three objects, like maybe two chairs and a little table in between. And the chairs maybe are just pushed out just a tad. And maybe you have uh, two pink pillows on them and then something on your table is pink. And that will make your eye look look at it like a triangle. And apparently that is very, very pleasing and very balanced. So it's Focal point, center point, and triangulation. Those are some good thoughts. Siobhan. I know. I see. I would not have put triangulation in that because you know we just know that three is pleasing. But they yeah, said that true. that has a, a lot to do. So think about that. If you have two chairs, you know maybe putting something in between that to be like a little because it's a little um, seating area. And I think, oh yeah, well we've got to have something to put your drink on or whatever, or a lamp if you have have to have lighting there. But really, it's all about what our eye sees and the mathematical perfectness of it. Oh, right. I and, love that. And I would add to that, that mm-hmm. a room that's off balance, sometimes we think it has to be symmetrical to be in balance. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be symmetrical, but in balance. So, I mean, that's really kind of the, the thing to think of. So, or for example, you don't have to have two of the exact same lamps or the two of the exact same chairs in a room, but you want them to be feel balanced. So you don't want them to be strikingly different. So you want them about the same height and maybe this about the same visual weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for like maybe two tables in a room that are on either side of a fireplace, you probably wouldn't want one that's a dark wood and one that's painted white. It would, even though they might be the same size, I think that visually that would feel jarring and off balance. And when we're thinking of balance, that's such a good point, Anita, because here's the things you want to look at. 
visual weight. And I'm all about that visual weight things because a mahogany dresser is going to have way more visual weight than a loose sight end table. True. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Visual yes. weight, color, pattern, and your layout. Those are the things that you want to look at. They have to work, all work together. So it's not maybe as easy as we think it is, but our eye can help us a lot because things just seem off. And when you're right. talking about, you know, a different color, like a maha, uh, like a, like a wood tone, like a walnut um, table and on the other side a white, well, that their visual weight, because the walnut table is darker, it carries more visual weight and the color's wrong. So you have two strikes against you right there. And then when she we're talking to get you, <laughs> no, one more and you're out. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. No, not in decorating, harsh. not in decorating. <laughs> no, well, so you can think, always move it around. Yeah. So I think the balance, like you said, the balance, it's not just about the size of things, but also about the color. So something yes. else that can make your room feel off balance is if maybe you have one color all on one side of your room and a totally different color on the other side. I think you want that color inner spursed in the room so that it's not kind of bunched in one corner or one part of the room. I think that can really make it feel off balance, even if you got all the furniture placed correctly. Because your eye goes to color and it's not going to bounce around the room like it should. Right. So Mm -hmm. it's in a sense, there's some of that flow that we're always talking about within your balance, but flow and balance are different things. And True. everything you guys are saying is so spot on. In the simplest terms, balance in a room is you don't want all your big heavy furniture on one side, right? So, yes. I mean, even if you if you boil it down to the simplest thing, that's- it's. I would say it's more it. than that, but that's a Oh, there's so point. much more than right. that. That's, <laughs> it's that's everything you guys have been saying. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, the point that I wanted to segue into, it's not even just- sides of the room, right side, left side, front, back. But I, I'd like you to also think about the lower half and the upper half. Mm-hmm. You don't mm-hmm. want all Good low point. furniture mm-hmm. where yeah. your eye, you know, you feel like your eyes are like you're looking down and there's nothing to, to guide your eyes up or make your eyes come up. So you can achieve that with, obviously you're not going to stick a piece of furniture way up high, but you can do that with window treatments or something on the wall or a tall piece of furniture. And that is a way to also use that space in creating a a balance between the bottom half of the room and the top half of the room. And, you know, I think balance is something that your eye learns that, I mean, I just think that, you know, some people have, it's sort of intuitive, but to, to, um, Fine tune it is definitely something that you learn. Like the more you decorate and the more you look at things, the more you look at rooms that are beautiful and balanced, the more your eye will appreciate that and you'll learn that. So it's well, and it's, I have a tip for teaching your eye. Oh, great. And, but you both know what it is. Well, you put it into words for us. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm not thinking, guessing. what is it? <laughs> so taking a photo of the Oh, yes. You know, I'm all about. I say that all the time. Photo take a picture, tells take all. A picture. That's the right. The picture, when you have the pic, it may, your room may feel balanced, but as soon as you look at that picture, you're going to notice things that you don't notice. When The thing is, when you live in the room, you get used to it being a certain way and you don't notice everything. That is it's just, so you true. You just accept that it's just the way it is. But when you take a picture of it, you it's easier to look at it much more objectively and notice things about your room that you might not notice otherwise. And so I think that's a great way to really look at it and say, oh. Now I see there's it needs some balance, so it, that can really come rooms out. Rooms that picture. are appealing, and you scroll through them on Pinterest, or you're looking at them in a magazine. If you keep these tips, particularly the ones that Yvonne and Anita have given you already today, in mind when you're looking at the picture, even though it's a, a beautiful room or a pretty room, you might notice that it's really not in balance. And you might say to yourself, I would move that over here and I would create this and I would get some triangulation (laughs) going on. Um, So even people who are pretty skilled at this sometimes don't get it right. And it is something that you can easily practice. I I can't remember what episode we were talking about. Oh, I guess um, freshening up one of those where we were talking about just moving your furniture around and you can easily do that and try different positions until you feel like you've got it right. Have it right. well balanced. Yeah. And, and try- if you're, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So I I think if you've got a symmetrical room, it's a lot easier to get this right if you have a lot of symmetry in the room. When you have asymmetry, you can still have balance, but I will say it takes a little more skill to get it right. That's exactly, oh boy, is that exactly right. One of the easiest ways to balance a room is make sure if you have a rug that it's big enough, that includes furniture. Because if you, a rug has a lot of visual weight, especially if it has pattern or the color is a little uh, more vivid or rich. And if you have, let's say, an oriental rug and it's positioned so the front, like, like your sofa's on it and your coffee table and the other half of the room isn't, that really will throw that off balance. Where if you had a bigger rug and included more of your furniture on it, it tends to look way more balanced. So start maybe with your rugs. If you um, have uh, like a throw rug, if you have some kind of flooring that you don't have wall-to-wall carpeting on, that's probably the easiest thing to do is start there and say, why does this look off balance? What about my rug is making my room look unbalanced? I think that's an excellent point. And I have a situation where my room is, my living room is long and narrow. And initially I had one rug and it was a sizal jute type rug at the end with the sofa and the coffee table sitting on it. And those two Brugere chairs sort of, you know, pulled up to it, nestling close to the rug. So that, that seemed like the area that was sort of And that was a balanced area in within your room. Right. So within the room that was balanced, but then it looked really odd with the the rest of the long bowling alley type room, <laughs> what was going to happen over there? You know, why why did you even have this part of the room? So, so what did I, you do? Well, I, I well I made a uh, a little reading area, although nobody really ever sits there. <laughs> but <laughs> you could if you were to sit down. So it's uh, one of those round tables that you can cover with the the nice cloth, so mm-hmm. it looks like a mm-hmm. nice table. And then mm-hmm. I pulled up two chairs to it and it has a lamp and a vignette going on. And then I have this giant piece of furniture that I refer to as the altar that the gentleman left for me <laughs> at the other end, which is, I, you know, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's way too fabulous to get rid of it and also way too big. Like you'd have to take, knock the house down to get it out. Oh so God. it's staying. But so then I, I added this other area. So it was kind of like another conversational area. Mm-hmm. But let mm-hmm. me tell you, when I decided to put another rug at the other end. I'm glad you said that. I was it so- made <laughs> so much sense. Mm-hmm. Now it seemed like the two oh, ends of the room yes. were equally as important. And yeah. then I did a faux um, hide rug overlapping the two oh. of them. So like a they were bridge. Like it. a bridge. Mm-hmm. Or you bought it. Well, first I had to slay the beast. No, I bought it. I was it. wondering <laughs> what you did. The faux it's beast. Faux. It's faux. The faux it's beast. Faux beast. Yeah. Yes. Um, but now that sort of natural organic shaped rug kind of overlaps the other two. And the other two are different. One's a sizal and one is this very muted gray. But are they similar in visual weight and color? Well, I think that they are not necessarily, mm-hmm. but okay. they work because there's more visual weight in the furnishings at the the sofa end, mm-hmm. and there's less visual weight with the furnishings at the other end, but the rug at the other end is a little heavier. And so they're different, but it really works. And the colors from the rug, which are gray and muted and charcoal and white, uh, pull up the colors that I'm using in the sofa and the pillows and all of that. So I've got the flow and I've been able to to sort of work with the shape of the room the best that I can. So if I only had the rug at one end, it would look like that was the only important end. That was the focal space. Too much visual weight. Mm -hmm. Right. And that that Mm -hmm. was just, and then the other part of the room was just a walkthrough, which would be such a waste. You know, that is classic, Kelly. That's a classic thing to do when you have a long a long room True. is to make two seating areas, but absolutely put two rugs down because one, because if you don't, you're going to look through the first, the one you come to first to the big focal point in the back. Yeah. It was really mm-hmm. a game changer. Cause I really, yeah. thought, I'm not going to like that. And I, you know, and it's a, it's narrow too. So I couldn't even get a very large rug. So I got as big as I could, which was really like a, it's a five by seven with a little mm-hmm. extra. And I'm even thinking of trying to get a, 
a sizal that's cut a little bit bigger than that one that would work with the other one and just layered under it. But I might be getting oh, a little carried wow. away with the rugs. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea to just kind of put the layers of the rugs back to back or yeah. you can layer them or you mm-hmm. can even get, like we've said before, go to a carpet store and have a rug custom made for mm-hmm. you. Yeah, and I make would sure you have it cut. bound correctly, have a surged edge. It's a much, a yes. much more professional oh, yeah. looking edge. You got to have that surged edge. But anyway, that really, I would recommend to anybody that has that sort of odd shaped room uh, to to try to make two destination spots and anchor each with a rug. And do you see how important a rug is? A rug is such an important as, um, article when you're thinking about balance. And it's one we often forget about. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free... That's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And that deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. You know. Yeah, especially if you have beautiful floors. I mean, I, you know, I was hesitant because we had just spent all this money on these floors and they're so pretty. And I was even hesitating of putting one in my dining room. But because I listened to this great podcast called Decorating Tips and Tricks, <laughs> then two of the hosts on there were very definite in the need for a rug under your dining room table. And again, yes. I was thrilled what a difference it made. And it didn't take away from my pretty floor. It enhanced everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, if you do everything right, everything comes into balance and everything just works together as a whole and you end up with more than the sum of the parts, right? Synergy. Excellent point. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to jump in here right now and remind everybody about some other synergy you can get going on with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter is a uh, sponsor of Decorating Tips and Tricks. And if you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash decorating, you can have an opportunity to put a posting for a job uh, for free. Or you can look around and see what kind of jobs there are available. And ZipRecruiter will help you find the perfect candidate or ZipRecruiter might help you find that next chapter in your own life. So ZipRecruiter has over a hundred different job boards and you can post to with one click. And it's ZipRecruiter.com slash decorating. 
Mm, thanks, ZipRecruiter. Okay, let me just go over one other thing that you just maybe can think about. And that is, let's say you have a rectangle sofa and a tall rectangle bookcase and something something on the other side that's oval. You have to be careful that you don't have too much of the same size, um, the same shape of something oh, that's on one point. side yeah. of the room. And that's, again, that's sort of one of those hidden things that you don't think about. So, um, you know, people like to say, if you're going to use rectangle on one side, fine, use it on the other. That's fine. But if you're going to go for different shapes in your room, make sure they're balanced too. That's really important. Yeah. Balance. Mm -hmm. It's all about balance, isn't it? It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, and here's a, a example of things that a lot of people might have in your home. A fireplace and some built-in bookshelves on either side. Or the fireplace and the TV above it and built-in bookshelves. Or no fireplace, but the big TV and the bookshelves. So you... You're getting the idea, right? You have this big, massive mm -hmm. piece, you know, seen as with visual weight as one unit on one side of the room. You need to balance the other side of the room. And normally you're going to balance it because you're going to have the sofa over there. Right. But that's probably not enough. You're going that's to need right. something above the sofa mm -hmm. and something on either side to really achieve the balance. So it doesn't look like, you know, if the if the, your room was a boat, that it would tip. To the, you know, <laughs> that's to the TV a side. really good uh, analogy. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, and Kelly, I'm thinking about, I just was thinking about while you, I was listening to you talk, if you were looking, for example, at a fireplace and on one side you had maybe a tall bookcase and on the other side you had simply a table, you don't have to have tall bookcases on the other side. One of the things you could do is put a large painting or artwork yes. above or that mirror. table. Or a mirror. Or mirror mm -hmm. that kind of gets it about the same height as the bookcase or just something, you know, it doesn't have to be exact same size, but that would really help balance. And the mirror might not have the visual weight. I just have to see it. Depending but. on the frame and how right. big it is. You just mm -hmm. have to look at it. I Absolutely. Mean, you'd have to take a picture. Right. There you yes. go. And here's the lesson. No Titanic rooms. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's so funny. Just think you Did just I get don't... tip of the day? You Analogy? got tip of the day. Is that a ding, metaphor? Ding, ding. I'm not sure. There you go. There you go. Oh, tip of the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, good one. I didn't even get that. <laughs> Gosh, I'm even funnier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you're always funnier than you, you think. You are very funny, <laughs> Kelly. I don't know. Um, I don't know I, if you're laughing with me or you're laughing at me, but that's- Oh, no, it's a little bit laughing. of both, but it's hey. great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For all of us. I mean, you should hear us when we're we're off off the air. <laughs> we're just we are pretty Oh, funny. we're hilarious. <laughs> oh. Um, here's another tip. I think this is just me that a tiny bit of off balance is okay in a room. Oh, this is the mm. advanced course of oh. balance. Ooh. A little, are you a little, a tension? little tension, a little de decor tension. Now you don't want like all your furniture on one side and your paintings on the other or something like that. Just something tatty to, and, and that creates a little bit of de decor tension and a little bit of interest. What do what you, do you mean by think? tatty? Well, a tad, like a little bit. Oh, oh I thought you meant like tattered. I get okay. what you're saying. No. And I think on the, oh, I'm going to add on to what you're saying uh, to say that if you've got a symmetrical room, you don't want everything to be symmetrical. You want to throw in some asymmetry boring. there. Because right. it's going well, to be Well, that's like boring. a hotel room, right? And then it's like, oh, <laughs> there's the nightstand and the bed and the dresser right. and the I two pictures although, above Although it. I could probably live in a nice hotel the rest of my life. <laughs> right. Although, I do I'll love tell hotels. You though, the whole the lamp thing, I've got an issue with that. I, I know that lamps don't have to match, but me personally, I always match my lamps on either oh, side of a sofa or a bed. Okay. I do. It mm -hmm. just kind of, it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes they're different tables and what I do is always get the lamps the same height. So if one table is shorter than the other one, I'll use some books to get the lamps the exact same height. That's a great tip. And you know, you can also find different tables that are about the same height. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know. that's helpful mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. That's my living room. I have a big um, 
a big table to the one side of my sofa and it's leather, black leather covered with um, nail studs, nail heads. And the other one is wooden and it's black and it has shelves, but I didn't want two of those great big black leather tables, but I just couldn't pass up the one because I thought it was so cool. They're, they're the same height, but they're, they're sort of different and I have the same lamps on them. So it does have a symmetrical look because there is a little more visual weight on the, ta- uh, the the bigger leather top table. But the other table, because of the shelves, you can add more to it. So that gives it more weight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that makes and then sense. I have the same lamps. And same lamps, I agree with you, are just, it's a beautiful symmetrical look that people don't really notice, but it helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, right. And it balance. pulls that. If you balance. have a lot of, right. If you have asymmetry, I think that's a nice way to pull in some soothing, pleasing mm-hmm. balance. Mm-hmm. Or like yeah, and we've using been mostly talking two of the about, same chairs. Mm-hmm. Right. Two of the same chairs is nice. I, we've been mostly talking about or giving examples of living rooms and whatnot, but mm-hmm. this really applies to every single room in your house. Uh, it can be a little bit more. I don't know. Would you guys think it's a little bit more challenging in the other rooms of your house? The ones that maybe are a little more. I think bedrooms are tricky. I think bedrooms I think so are tricky. too. Mm-hmm. I guess what I was saying was the size of the bed really makes a difference, and that might take up a large chunk of your room, depending on the size of the room you have. And then you need some functional things. You need some dressers and whatnot, and you might have a TV in your bedroom, and so that lends a little awkwardness, at least I think. Um, But let me tell you what we recently did. Peter agreed to get the TV out of the bedroom and we just went to a a nice new iPad. How smart was that? And it's never had a TV in our bedroom ever. Never. That's, you know, that's nice, but that's kind of, we don't have a TV downstairs. We don't have one of those big screen TV rooms anymore. And so, uh, you know, we like to watch a show at, at night and, it just seemed like, you know, that was a little bit of entertainment. So it was good to have it there, but I can stand all the wires and the boxes and all that. And that really throws well, the balance off in your room. What a great idea. I mean, I'd that rather watch TV idea. on my laptop or, I mean, because I don't watch real TV anymore. So I No, we don't watch stuff. anything when it's really on. Yeah, it's like Netflix and Hulu and I do that on my iPad or my laptop. But here's remember the- when you were little and like the Peanuts special would be on for Christmas <laughs> and it'd be like seven thirty on you know Thursday Saturday you have to night be in front yeah. of the TV to watch it oh, yeah. or you missed oh. it for a whole year. You know? That well, is I true. Remember That's when true. I re- I remember in the old days we were our dad my dad's channel changers. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it just tell us to get up and change the channel. You were very useful to have around. You yes, were. were. You, you were, were like the your tool dad's holder, little handyman. Yeah. <laughs> the channel changer. <laughs> well, I want to get back to bedrooms. Okay. Here's the thing. Like I'm thinking about our master bedroom. There's really only one place to put our bed. Now I've tried other places, but it is so off balance and it's not, per- actually it's not perfect, but you know, sometimes you, you have to work with what you have. And then Bob needs a chest of drawers and I need a dresser and a mirror and we have a settee in there and we have a chair in there and, you know, it's just, I don't think it's perfect, but it's the best I can get it. So sometimes you are not going to have a perfectly balanced room. It's yeah, impossible. I feel like mine is still a work because in Because we progress. have three windows in this room, and then we have a big opening to a sitting room. So we don't have that many, like, blank walls. Mm. Well, that's so, a good point. Mm-hmm. Your windows can really throw off oh, the my. feeling of balance, in some, especially in some of these older houses or just some of these houses that were thrown up and the builder really didn't take the time to think about the symmetry and how the room was going to be used. So, you know, that is something. If you've got some windows and things feel off, balance because your windows weren't quite, aren't quite right. You can always put a mirror or something on another wall Good to, point. to give a little symmetry where maybe a window should have gone. So that's something you can do. Anita, but even if to get symmetry from the outside of your house, sometimes because of the way the rooms are positioned, it's not perfect on the inside. Right, right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's the case for our, our bedroom is the only one like that. The others are pretty easy to decorate, but our bedroom's a little tricky. So sometimes you just may have to do the best you can and um, balance things with art or something more on your wall, or, you know, maybe even do without a piece of, a, of furniture. 
you know, yeah, and I, if you are listen, you know, when you're listening to what we're talking about today, and if you go and have a look at one of your rooms, or as Anita says, take a photo of it and then look at it, and you're feeling that maybe the balance is not right, or it's slightly off, or it's really bad, just move your furniture around. Bobby will come and move it back for you. No. It's not oh, a problem. Get, get the sliders. Oh, oh, oh. I have Go such get the sliders. A, I have such a story. That's oh. not true. This was our second year married, and I was pregnant with Jacqueline. Our, our Wait a old... minute. Is this when it was boho Bobby and you were eating on the coffee no, table? No, Bobby's not boho. But yeah, <laughs> we were, oh my, he, he's a manly man. He's like a... I Boho have a truck mean you're and a not gun, and, you know. I can Boho paint. does not mean feminine. Boho no, I know, but he, of he's not, not a gypsy. He's not okay. a gypsy at okay. all. But anyway, um, I was I was five months pregnant with my daughter Jacqueline, and we got our a Christmas tree. Well, we'd always cut down a Christmas tree, so they're like so small out in the field, <laughs> but they grow. By the time you strap them to your car till the time you get them to your house. (laughs) And we're always like trying to fit it in sideways and we can't stand it upright. Well, we had this gorgeous tree and I wanted it in, in front of our windows so it would show from the street. So I said, but that means we've got to arrange, rearrange the furniture in the living room. And you know, I'm five months pregnant and, and, um, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape, but still, you know, I don't want to be hauling around big furniture. So, you know, Bobby and I arranged it and he kept wanting to put all the furniture on one side of the room. Well, if you know me, that would drive me insane. Like I couldn't go down into the downstairs because I would see that. And that would just be, that would like wipe (laughs) out the the whole Christmas tree. (laughs) Seriously. So He said, Yvonne, it's just got to stay like this. I can't, you know, I just can't move anymore. And all the furniture was so off balance, like the sofa, the love seat. That's, you know, all this was all so. Oh, so you've lived it. Oh, Oh. I, so when he took a nap, I didn't care if I was pregnant or not. I puffed (laughs) and puffed and moved all the furniture and it looked so beautiful. And he (laughs) came downstairs and he said, okay, so when the, when your piano comes tomorrow, where are you going to put it? Oh. He had got me a piano for Christmas. Oh, and- that's how you got the piano. <laughs> yes. And, and, um, he's I, so good. I know. And I felt so bad. And you know what? It would have been per- perfect if the piano was there. <laughs> so he helped me move everything back, and the piano came, and I, I, Oh, I just loved it. That's so, yeah, isn't that cute? He's a smart guy. But I couldn't stand for a minute having that off balance look. That drove me insane. Yeah, I probably would have done the same thing. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. They've got to tell us if they're going to do something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, it was and, supposed you know, to be a that, surprise. And then you Christmas were like, Christmas Eve, on. it was coming. Yeah. It's jewelry, Bobby. And we can have a balanced room. Just yes, there you go. Make it easy for everyone. Yes, he just I asked don't know me, what do you sh- want for, what do you want for your birthday? And I looked at him like, do you have three heads? You know? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. 
I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Now, I don't know if we should say this, mm-hmm. but maybe, Go ahead, do maybe it anyway. Bobby won't listen. But we okay. did get an email recently from one of our listeners, Patricia. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Patricia is advocating for Bobby not only to be on the podcast, but perhaps to have his own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot let him read that. His she really so wants to have, mm-hmm. so, she wants to hear what Bobby has to say from his You own just lips. have to know my husband. He, I'm the chatterbox. I'm the talker. He's sort of more quiet. He's a thinker. And, but like he's, he and loves. And a doer. I want to say he's yeah, a doer. Yeah, he's a doer. Yep, oh yep. my gosh, he's a doer. God bless him. He's like steady Eddie. Like if you could have, if he Balanced could be the dictionary. Bobby. <laughs> Balanced Bobby. Steady Eddie. He's just, but he would actually love to be on the podcast. Exactly. Well, anyway, Patricia sent us the most lovely, lovely email. She's oh, really she enjoying sure so the podcast. And mm-hmm. uh, she gave us lots of suggestions, which we are really excited about going forward with a lot of her mm-hmm. suggestions for our episodes. And we're not so sure about Bobby's own podcast, but we will take that under advisement. I hey, guess. <laughs> the men tell all. I'm telling you, we should do that podcast. Yeah, Give it to the guys. The- yeah, it's but- going to be the man tells all. Yeah, I was going to say our <laughs> husbands won't come on. I bet you Peter would. Sealed. Peter no, would. I don't know. <laughs> he could tell about all the tech things he does. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he can't give us our our, our backstory secrets. I don't know all our <laughs> our secret JavaScript Mm-mm. we got. Going That's on right. Here. That's right. But without our three. Without our three guys, this couldn't work. So we really appreciate our men. That's right. It's good to have somebody to move the furniture around. Sometimes. Well, that's you right. Know, to get everything in balance. I wish I had when Anita said those big pads that you can get to put under your furniture. That's like ice skating them. Yeah. You can just ice yeah. skate them around your and room. And they've got them for carpet and for hardwood. Or yes. For, oh, floors. for carpet yeah. too. non carpet Ding, 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 ding. That's yeah. the tip of the day. Show notes. Show notes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll, we'll, put, that them we'll put them in there. So thanks for hanging out with us today. And I think we covered a lot of tips for how to spot an off-balance room and how to fix it. So be sure and take a picture of that room and go get your sliders and have fun getting everything just the way you want it. So remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey there. If you're loving our podcast like we're loving our podcast, we would love you to rate and review us. Head to iTunes to do that. It's easy and it would mean so much to us. And if you do rate and review us, we're going to enter you to win a fantastic giveaway. The details for the giveaway are in the show notes for this episode. And you can find the show notes at decoratingtipsandtricks.com.